Astronauts to the moon. <laughs> Ignition sequence start. Three, two, one. Houston, we have a problem. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. We got to go on the ground. You got a bunch of guys about to turn blue. What you're seeing here is a mirage. Yeah, you know what time it is, right? It's Thursday. It's time for the ninth edition of the Baby Truth Show. We got Benjamin Balderson in the house tonight. It's going to be fun. We also have Road Triple Seven. We've got Dave Weiss. We've got Crumb and myself, Your Highness, Your Holiness, King Jaron from Jaronism. And that show begins in about, I don't know, what do you want to say? A minute? 58 seconds? 57? 56? We'll see you guys shortly. It's time for another episode. The Baby Truth Show. Here we go. Let's kick it. Go. Oh, when it starts now. It's wow. the Baby Truth Show. It's 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 the Baby Truth Show. Baby, 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 show. Wow. Sorry, kids. Things ain't always gonna be what they seem. They start you up fairly, got you thinking that we one team and we should live, live breathe, believe the same one thing. Skip the lecture. I'm a director making my own scene. When you find out, only certain people get a ticket to the hideout. Waiting for us to go put the fires in the skies out. Because we ain't no no spinning globe. It's time you find out. Now open up the crib and let your mind Let's out. Let's go. It's the baby. Everybody to the show. I am your host, King, Your Highness, Your Majesty, Jaron from Jaronism. Welcome. We've also got below me. By the way, we are doing the uh, uh, very important pronouns thing today. We've got Shithead Shill Mason, Dave Weiss in the house. Dave, welcome to the show. It's nice to have you. Well, you got to do have to come off mute. That's part of the uh, part of the block in every time, motherfucker. <laughs> okay. Yes. Um, and thanks for saying below me. Yes, I know. And. Uh, Shithead Shill Mason. That's what you want to be addressed as? Well, it's proper. Okay. All right. We also have Dirt Doy below you. Ah, oh, thank you. Thank you for uh, you know considering my pronouns. I appreciate that very much. I, I don't want to be a bigot. So No, of course not, Your Highness. Yes. Wow, you guys are getting good at this already. <laughs> We've got uh, to your right, cool chick, whatever you want, uh, Rose. That's what she came up with. Rose, those are pretty good pronouns. Thank you, but uh, Jaron, you know, I'm a little bit disappointed. Uh, you know, I didn't know that this was going to happen before the show. We didn't discuss this. Uh, uh, you know, obviously, I'm going to be mathematically uh, judging the baby trutherness of the show. And obviously, this whole pandering to the agenda, the uh, putting the pronouns on, it's all garbage. And it's entertainment, Jaron. And so this is a percentage <laughs> of entertainment. And we got to keep on that. Not really. 80. Any percentage ratio. That's my pronoun. Are you and saying that I don't feel? Are you saying I don't feel like a king inside? Come on, Jaron. We know what this is. We know you don't think you're actually a king. You're just trying to entertain people wow. by calling yourself a king. That's and, that's yeah. racist. You're just talking yeah. about the agenda here. You're a bigot. You're a bigot, Rose. Rose. Total bigot. We need to focus on the hoaxed events and that they're all fake. Total, total, totally uh, bigot. I, I, I don't think I want you on the show now. <laughs> so I'm just going <laughs> to go ahead and introduce our guest, please. Could you? Yes. Okay. So anyway, now to get to something very serious, which is our guest today. Yes. My dear good friend, Ben Balderson, who is an Odinist heathen. He knows all about comparative world religion. And he has had so many very, very interesting experiences exploring and learning about all the different religions of the world. And then just oddly, it just so happened that when he started looking in to Odinism and its connection to nature and alchemy, it just so happened that he really resonated with that. And I actually happened to feel the same way. I very much resonate with the principles of Odin and and heathen principles and the idea of metaphorically that you can only get to Valhalla by gloriously dying in battle, which to me represents fighting for truth, 
fighting for what's right and living close to nature. So for any Christian out there who doesn't like the word heathen, you just haven't been educated about the inversion perversion of the word of the word heathen, which started with the Vatican and the Jesuits just wanting people who lived close to nature to look like negative evil demon people who pay attention to the sun. I mean, come on. The sun is what makes it time for us to know whether it's are we supposed to plant stra strawberries or grapes it's just common sense and also he is he makes really really great products and he's very bad at um like being a business person so you guys <laughs> he, makes, he makes jewelry in the winter and this i'm going to pull this around full circle there's a reason this opening has a point he makes jewelry and stuff with his hands he works on a farm in a symbiotic relationship with animals and why does he do that is because it's actually a form of therapy for himself to overcome ptsd because of a lot of stuff including the, and this isn't everything he's been in even solitary confinement so we have so many cool Cool, interesting things to discuss whatever he wants whatever he finds um, to be useful for people today we have to determine whether he's a baby truther on Crow triple seven radio it all started when we were on truth frequency radio and we were taking phone calls and Ben called in as a guy to talk about real alchemy because someone came on and said some BS about like diatomaceous earth or um, like organite or monatomic gold or something dangerous so when he finally called in and talked to crow it was love at first sight total man crush and now he's been one of the most popular guests on the show starting with 162 and then in 241 he did an incredible episode on cymatics talking about capturing um cymatic images in flash frozen water so that you can literally send a message through water and then more um episodes like 350 316 292 and 286 you know how we're always recommending the light of egypt Egypt and then the Zodiac, the Cell Salts of Salvation. Ben talks about how, like, this is going to trip you out and get you interested. The, an idea is a perfection thing that has nothing to do with the material world. And there's actually an alchemical transmutation that goes on to become the very sperm that comes out of your junk to create amazing divine spark life. So just go ahead. It's the Career Triple Seven Radio. Listen to the episodes with Ben. And now let's have a cool Rose, show with the baby tree there. Did you know that there's four different ways to combine the episode numbers that he has that equal 666? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm sure that I could use a whole bunch of different kinds of gematria and numerology to come up with whatever uh, outcome I wanted. That's I met I met today. Ben when I went uh, on a uh, what was it a retreat a camping trip What the hell was it in uh, Woodstock, New York? Sounds gay. Yeah, it was a little gay. Oh. Uh, but I met I met Ben. I met Amanda. Amanda. Um, and Boomer. who else was there? There was James. James Andy, True was there. Andy and James True. A Andy Kaufman. And I had no idea who these people were. And but over the course of a few days, I'm like, you know, I'm like, who is this Benjamin guy? He's a funny guy. And then everything he said is like, whoa. I'm like, where is this guy coming from? If you can understand 10% of what Ben tells you, you're a genius. <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome to the show, Benjamin. Happy to have you. I've watched a little bit of your stuff. Very into the um, off-grid stuff. Um, really congratulate. And you, if I remember right, former millionaire. Yeah. Yeah. You bet. So, and, uh, I remember yeah. you saying that it didn't, uh, didn't bring you happiness. No, it was pretty miserable. I, uh, owned a, a number of businesses, including, uh, the second largest bar in the Sioux Falls, South Dakota, which is the largest city in South Dakota, making it nothing compared to most cities, but, um, <laughs> but it was the second largest bar there. And at that time, you know, it, you under it, it gives you an understanding of why, like some of these athletes and whatnot act the way they do, like where they go and they just splurge money and you don't understand why it's because like when you're doing nothing, but working and grinding all the time, you literally have no life. And then what little bit of time you have, you basically try to buy a life with extravagance mm -hmm. that you can have, you can afford for sure. And then because you've spent all that money and instead of spending it wisely, cause you don't have the time to go out and, and it really plan out a life even where that money would actually be a good resource. Uh, you just end up blowing it. It's just the nature of it. And then you end up going and earning more and it's, it's freaking miserable. 
I, I don't hardly have two nickels to rub together at this point at pretty much any time. Uh, and I'm, I love my life. I said, I'm fantastic. Happy, it happy seems happy. like there's like a, like a, um, a connection between time and money. And then as soon as you get a lot of money, you lose time. Yeah. And, yep. and for me, time has always been more valuable than money. And it seems like anybody like that has like half a brain, like kind of rec- recognizes that eventually. And so, uh, I'm yeah. glad that you uh, figured that out so I don't have to learn the hard way. And your life <laughs> doesn't really change much. I mean, when I was making 100000 a year versus now, it, you, you, don't, you don't notice it. I just have more time. I'm more time with family, more time at home. So, yeah, it's uh, yep. way better. Yep. D- and nice I don't classes. pay other people to live my life for me. Right. Like, that's one of the things that people don't realize they do in society is they, people, uh, they pay other people to live their life. That connection that you have with your home and with your land, your children, your animals, part of that comes from the time and the sharing and the teachings that you do, the working on the house. I understand everything about my house intimately, every little nook and cranny and how everything was put together because I did it. Mm -hmm. And when there's a problem, I know how to go deal with it. I know what problems to look for because I know the weak points, all those kind of things. You are truly in your life and those people are not. They're paying somebody else to live their life for them. Dave, uh, we'll ask the guys here if they know. What is the problem with glitter? Do you know what the problem with glitter is? Anybody? It never goes away. Yeah. How can you get in trouble with glitter? No, it's it's usually your your significant other will think you've been at a strip club. It's it's the problem with glitter. <laughs> or you've, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's like all over my hands now. Uh, no, and then I was going to ask too, Dave, about uh, Jenny. Yesterday, did you mean to give her the six 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 referral code? Did I saw that? Can you add it up that way? I mean, is that a legitimate way to do it? Uh, it was six Although- <laughs> six two two four four. So yeah, I do yeah. have a, a concern <laughs> with her and. Oh, she great. is a Illuminati confirmed doing both symbols. hundred yeah. percent confirmed. hundred percent. I'm Means sold. You're a government shell. Okay. Yes, for sure. And you know, I, the only reason I brought her on is she's going to be moving up. She's going to be on, uh, uh, probably Glenn Beck or something soon. And so we just got, we're just kind of, I'm, I'm the pathway to Holy fame. Listen, I, and I was oh. watching the chat. I, the first part, I couldn't listen to the show at first. I had to go back and listen to it. And I'm watching the chat and I'm like, are these comments out of context? People lose their minds when you have a a very pretty, voluptuous female. They kind of do. Okay, uh, sp- I mean, spiral. People, they spiral. Yeah. But listen to her mind. Listen to what she said. Listen to her confidence. Listen to her, her humility. That is a beautiful woman, and she also has a pretty decent looking face and body. Yes, pretty decent. Okay, but you guys, she could. <laughs> I may allow it that she go on Glenn Beck, but she first has to be groomed by us on the Baby Truth or Show, which we have to bring True. her on as part of our show. And then she could slowly use us as a stepping stone and then make her way up the ladder. But I don't think I, she could do she could do a lot better than Glenn Beck, I think. I think if we, now that we already have used Alex as our prototype, mm-hmm. uh, the sky's the <laughs> limit with... <laughs> Wait, who says she's going on Glenn Beck? That's what I'm saying. We can do a lot better this time. Let's get her farther. Let's get her on. Listen, you, you, here, here's the thing. My DITRH videos, they're all short. You know why? Because I have a short attention span, or at least I used so you to before it. Flat Earth. And and it's a great way, you know, somebody that thinks Flat Earth is stupid, they're not going to watch an hour and a half video. They're going to watch a two-minute video, a one-minute video, a three-minute video. And so TikTok, you know, a lot of people say TikTok is dumbing down America. Sure, it, it is, but it also is getting information out there. There are tons of people coming onto Flat Earth because of TikTok, because of people like her, because of people like um, Caleb, right? By the way, I, there's a, I've added a TikTok button to the web page. Hit the web button on the app, and the first box is a great TikTok channel. Follow him. I believe and, it's um, Caleb, though. Isn't it Caleb? Short and commercials because what? the average American attention span wouldn't hold for 15 seconds anymore. <laughs> and and and. and that was before TikTok ever was a thing. But, How is but, that dumbing America down? Yeah, like, nah, it was already dumb. Listen, I, I'm yeah, with you. Dumb. And um, and and you know, sometimes in an hour show, there might best be a three minute clip that says it all, right? Or a couple little pieces put together. And these TikTokers, for lack of a better description, are putting them together in bite sized formats, putting a little music under them, using that that ooh, that Jew magic or whatever you want to call it. Oh, Dave knows all about that. And uh, 
it's effective and it's fun and it's bringing on new people. And that's all this is about. However, you know, what's the best way to bring people on? Bring them on. I've seen tons is of videos with you, Dave, doing that kind of stuff. Like people have uh, put stuff together. Of you I, I, I go on TikTok. I, I, I like, look, it's me again. It's me. I, like, I never go <laughs> yeah. on TikTok. And I'm like, I don't even know who these channels are, but I'm like, bring it. You know, like take whatever good clips there are out there. Absolutely. And uh, TikTok, TikTok is um, it's a way to surf the channels really quick and, and actually get good pieces of content. So it's not it's, it's though to have like good editing though, where you take something that is, you know, YouTube dimensions. And if you're going to put it on TikTok, you kind of have to make it yeah, the other way. Like Otherwise that. people just ignore it. Like, well, they just, Oh, this looks like a boomer made it. I'm moving on. <laughs> uh, <laughs> like seriously. So like, yeah, if you're going to make something, they change the dimensions or to at least like a square. So um, it looks like it was made on there. Otherwise I think people yeah. get turned off if it looks like it's clearly from YouTube. Dave, but, do you know Lockwood? Lockwood, Lockwood, uh, no, but but here's the 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 um, TikTok button. Whoop, right there. Sweet, right there. No, Lockwood is uh, like seventy something, and he was talking to me the other night, and he was like, "Oh, I love TikTok." So it's not just the younger people. He said it's like a magazine to him that he can that the pages right. take a minute to read. So he's just flipping through. If he doesn't like a page, he flips to the next one. He says he's read a bunch. So yeah, people are saying that I should get on TikTok, and I, I, so. I agree. I'm waiting. Caleb uh, right here is going to give Caleb? me a lesson. I don't Caleb, think Caleb. I keep calling him Caleb. I don't sorry. know who the hell Caleb. calls himself Caleb. Caleb. Okay, Caleb. It's a, it's a, well, I did. Um, Caleb. Sorry. Sorry about that, dude. Um, <laughs> but, but everyone else is already putting me on TikTok. <laughs> like, do I really need to go on TikTok? Other people are doing it. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm going to learn how to do it. All I'm right. Gonna sit through it. Caleb's going to give you and I a lesson over Zoom over the next, next week. Okay, cool. Awesome. Sounds good. Uh, okay. Back to Benjamin. Benjamin, I guess you can tell us what you've been up to. I know where you're going to be in October. Yes, yeah, sir. Going to be a Flattoberfest with uh, a bunch of you fine people. I'm not sure about Crumb, but I know the rest of y'all are going to be, be there. there. I'll be there for sure. Nice. I'm still not sure, but nice. it's uh flatterfestivals.com if you want to get tickets it, today. It, and if you're on the fence about coming, Benjamin Balderson's going to be there, people. No, now, that's the worth the trip alone. Now there's nobody on the fence. You just uh, yeah. you pushed everyone over. just jumped yeah. off the fence. Yes, you Please betcha, you know, guys. Alchemy is a lost. I bring the party. <laughs> and and he, getting to meet someone about Ben and being able to ask him questions. I mean, just having Ben and Cami together <laughs> and like the idea of. Uh, explaining how the world works and we even had an episode where ben was talking about the world being like a galvanic cell where the sun and the moon are anode cathode relationship and when you hear the phrase oh we're the salt of the earth you think about salt and how that can kind of act as the mercury in the battery and everything kind of makes sense and it totally jives with well certainly uh, it wouldn't jive with the heliocentric model would it ben no, not not well. No, there's no way because in the heliocentric model, the sun. Yeah, I don't. I don't see how it would very well. Yeah, it, so it makes more sense, and it's it's fascinating when you think about the Earth as a working battery. I mean, it's in it's in an enclosed syst system, so no, it couldn't exactly. work if it was there. And you're working ben, with Elsie King on that. You doing Elsie? You and Elsie King looking at that? Yeah, that's uh, Elsie King and I have been working on that for a couple of years now. Yeah. Um, you bet. Ben, I have a question for okay. you. Hold You're on, let me see the difference between Ben and Elsie King. See, Ben it talks about a galvanic cell, but then the difference is that Elsie King, he talks about the idea of there being like a galvanic series where there can be multiple cells in a larger unit. Sorry about that, Dave. Go ahead. Does that work into the puddle map? Yes, everything does. Right? The put, well, you know the puddle, you know the puddle map, right? With, with yeah, I've seen. Yeah, yeah. So th I, I call those planets. We live on a planet, a little part of the giant plane. And if each one of those was a battery, oh, my question back planet. to you before we start spiraling into a flatter space, um, mm -hmm. you're you're an alchemist, for lack of a better description. And I'm assuming you learned about flat Earth when we all did, 2015, give or take. Uh, also, I'm a heathen, and as a heathen, the earth is flat. And so you've, you've known for a long time? Uh, not always, by any means, but uh, I already had the idea, and I don't, I don't necessarily see the world as flat, or the earth as flat. It's more, to me, a snow globe. 
Um, and we live on what I call the carbon plane, which is relatively flat. Okay. But we, we understand that there's a, most of us understand there's a firmament above. Well, the firmament, if we live, like I happen to have a grinder here in my hand, I guess. If we live here on this flat plane and we have a firmament above, there's also as above, so below. And so many people at least uh, understand a little bit of occult things and understand that saying, well, this dome is also going to be represented down below us. So we live on this plane that's perfect for us. Everything above this plane is too etheric for us. We can't live on that. <clears throat> Everything below this plane is too dense for us. Mm. We can't go there either. We're meant to live on this carbon plane. And so, they even call it airplane. So if I hear what you're saying, we live in the center of a weed grinder. <laughs> yes. Yes. That's that is such a great exactly. looking weed grinder. The Himalayas yes. are the worst of the uh, the grinder peaks. Right. Be careful there. Um, so my, my question, I guess, was like when you came to the realization that the earth is not a spinning ball, how, did that affect your work? Did your work excel from there? Where, you know, how did that transfer trans transformation happen? So from that point, I had, then I started looking at, cause I was already also, uh, along my walks, my through things, uh, I was visited by Odin and Odin shared with me a tree of life that uh most people don't understand and the tree of life that most people represent there's a singular one and odin said i'm three months and showed me three trees kind of spinning in the air and that was basically it uh he doesn't give you a lot you got to go work for it so i as i'm putting this together it's very representative of the human body the earth and then even on uh, each level, it's represented because as above, so below each level, when you start breaking them down, breaks down the same exact way. So it also worked into my tree of life. That's like uh, if anybody looks at my uh, rock fin or my YouTube channel, that's by far my most popular video uh, is me uh, showing off the tree of life that, and uh, matching that to the way the world actually works. So alchemically, my tree of life uh, matches uh, the way things are going to break down if I break down a plant or an animal. And I can point out to how all that works in the tree. <clears throat> Very cool. Excellent. Um, explain to me what an Odinist is. Uh, the short and simple of it is, is that I follow Odin. Okay. Um, I could have, I could have guessed now, that. <laughs> who is Odin for, yeah, for everybody out for the there? people who don't know that. Yeah, who is Odin? Odin is, Odin is now, a lot of people are going to have heard of it just from Marvel, and they're going to think this Marvel thing, but the entire uh, Northern European people uh, mostly all followed Odin, and either Odin or Tyr or one of the Asir in some way, shape, or form. Um so that carries over to today and a lot of people also would get the, the reference of vikings although the way that's painted on tv again just like marvel it's all pretty much nonsense um so there's a religion behind it also that's called asatru and i'm also not a part of that um odin himself was a left-hand path uh practice person and so I mean, a lot of people are going to cringe at that because then they don't really understand left hand, right hand and right hand path is people that follow religions. So you're going to have like your Christianity, you're going to have Asatru. And, and one of the things people don't understand is also things like Satanism. Satanism also has rules that you're supposed to follow and tenants and you go to church and they have priests who are above you. Odin was left-hand path. He went and did his own thing. He went and got his own knowledge. He went and sacrificed himself to himself for wisdom. He did all those things himself. Nobody gave it to Odin. And so that's a left-hand path person. So now 
when you're looking at like Odin or Hermes or even uh, Jesus Christ, where Jesus didn't follow the rules that were laid out before him. He made up his own rules. He came in and said, I'm here to break the rules. I'm here, or, I'm here to change the rules, made a different path. So that's a very left-hand path, but then everybody who follows behind is right-hand path. It, it's a very interesting thing, but I'm left-hand path like Odin was. I walk the walk he did, which means that I still have to do the work. I have to go through the same things he did, and I'm not going to get necessarily the same experience he, he did, but I will end up at the same place. Let me go around and ask each person a question real quick, just uh, so I can get an idea. Um, Crum, what's your opinion of uh, evolution? Do you think it's true? you think it's not? I what think it's a desperate attempt to bridge um, a, uh, adaptation um, into something more fairy tale. I think their, their uh, <clears throat> connection is, hey, look, this bird uh, on this island you know, developed a long beak, therefore you're a monkey, um, somehow like is enough for enough people to run with. But to me, there's, it's, it's two different things and okay. we're talking about two different so things. So kind of denying it a little bit, Dave. Yeah. I don't believe in, uh, macro evolution at all. One species turning into another. Okay, well, that's, now good. You can... that's good. That's denial. Uh, Rose. Okay. Okay. Muted. Oh, you're muted. <laughs> you know, I have a very long answer, but I'll start with this. All I need to know is that in biology 101 at Santa Barbara City College in the early 2000s, we had a test and the question was, is evolution a fact? And the correct answer to give was true. And because when mm. she was preparing everyone for the test, she repeated three times during the lecture to remember for the test that evolution is a fact that's enough for me to question it bottom line so denial, but I could give okay. you a much longer answer if i wanted to and benjamin so i i i as dave stated i don't believe in macro evolution there's absolutely no evidence to support nice. it in any way shape and form micro evolution does happen inside yeah. the species and you can see that in plants and plants are very simple because you can do multiple generations uh, inside of a couple of years and you can see those little micro changes where it adapts to its environment and makes micro evolutions but macro that's just absolutely exactly. so we've got basically a consensus let me just show you this uh, <clears throat> article here just so you guys know because we fit right in denial of evolution is a form of white supremacy okay so oh so we're all white supremacists yes yeah, so we're us. all white supremacists and uh yep because the global but aren't white people no, the global scientific here, here. community overwhelmingly accepts that all living humans are from African descent. So if you deny evolution, you're denying the African Americans their their right to be f the first people here. So I just wanted to point that out that I think that Amazing. that's... Uh, that, that, this is coming out to contrast because there's actually a number of articles coming out right now um, where the out of Af Africa uh, theory has really come under serious fire. Right, I've seen those, and, yeah. Uh, then, uh, like Robert Seffer, uh, he's an anthropologist. He has a whole thing uh, on it, and it's it's he's it's fairly fantastic. And of course, you know everybody that says that yes is a white supremacist. Oh uh, yeah, it says here that uh, in the in fact the first wave of legal fights against evolution was supported by the Klan, and so and that was back in 1920. So if the, if the Klan supported it in 1920, then we're all probably members of the Klan. So it makes sense to me. 100% confirmed. Yeah, it's confirmed. So we're white supremacists. I knew that the, gonna... the Klan was really heavily involved in the scientific community. I had always <laughs> heard that about the Klan. <laughs> yes, deeply involved. <laughs> um, anyway, yeah, that's incredible. Uh, okay, so we got that about, and you've, you are a father to many, yes? Ben? Myself? Sorry. Yeah. yeah. I've got uh, seven kids and seven grandkids so far. Wow. That's uh, and, yeah, quite and a few. three Rottweilers. No, that's a... uh, we're up to five now, and they're pibbles. We're nice. up to five now. Wow, uh, no, uh, not Rottweiler. Are they Rott? They're not Rottweilers. They're um, English they're bulldogs. Pitbulls. Oh, pitbulls. Pitbulls. Right, right, right. Pitbulls. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Well, they're uh, they're partially albino, so it's it's kind of hard to tell, and they all have uh, bi uh, bichromia, so they all have like one white eye and one colored eye. How many murders each? Uh. 12, 
12. We like to keep it in a round even. Nice. So you let one out until he catches up and then let the other one out. <laughs> I can't stand it. We had the greatest pit bull and people give pit bulls a hard time. It's like, I'm pretty sure it's the owners that are making yeah. him fight and making him jump and swing from ropes and shit. And I hung out with so three where, of them. Where, and they're the nicest dogs. Dave, yeah. When I met Dave, so we, I come rolling up and, and, uh, most of the guys that were there, uh, were more on like the Andy Kaufman, uh, page. Right. So they were, these were very prim and proper people. And so my wife and I come rolling up and, you know, dirt and dust basically flying and the door, <laughs> the door slides open and three giant pibbles come flying out and I and, come a, and out a big and, puff of smoke <laughs> yeah 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 and a big puff of smoke and I come rolling out all bearded up and swearing and uh, you know and I've just been on the road I drove from uh northern California all the way to New York for this event and uh we got pulled over we went to Niagara Falls we went to uh Doug Diamonds at the our Doug Diamonds at the Herkimer Diamond Mine so I'm just like amped and just crazy and you, everybody's eyes are about this big. And my dogs come charging and tear. Uh, <laughs> he's with my wife right now, but this guy is so big and he has to wear a log chain because when he gets excited, he can break anything and he's not aggressive. He's not going to hurt you. He's literally wants to come kiss you on your face. It doesn't matter if you're standing because he can stand and jump like eight feet tall and you, you, you have to hold him with this giant log chain. And everybody's just eyes this big, scared shitless. And by the end of it, like three different people are like, I want a pit bull now. <laughs> <laughs> They're extremely smart uh, and super kind. I mean, they'll, they'll look after your children. People think that they'll attack them, but uh, you just have to be careful. It's all how you raise them. Um, and you, I guess being off grid isn't that big of a deal for you because you grew up on a farm, yeah? Yep. I'm from a, a farm out in the middle of nowhere in South Dakota. We had electricity, um, but we had a well and uh, we had uh, a electricity and a, and a normal phone. That was about the big difference between then and now. And I have electricity, but I provide it myself. Um, but yeah, other than that, it's not really that big of a change for me, I guess. Is it solar or, or is it the uh, the creeks on the side of your House I have four. Provide. I got forty solar panels. Okay. Uh, the one, the one, the one creek is seasonal on the side of my house here. Uh, that one's actually just about petered out now for the year. Uh, the other one goes all year long, but it's enough to keep my water system going and uh, the animals to have a nice little pond. Other than that, it's not uh, not powering anything. It takes actually quite a bit of uh, stream power right to generate electricity and how many acres are you on uh 25 nice oh wow okay my brother just uh bought seven acres i went so i was shocked how how big that was i didn't know seven acres was as big as it is so 25 quite absolutely quite large and what state just wondering Uh, for northern california wow really okay well that must be nice i'm up in uh, i'm up in humboldt county okay um yeah i'm right on the farm I was going to say I could throw a rock and hit you, but probably I'd need a slingshot. How, how many Bigfoots have you seen up there? Twelve. Uh, you know, I, I haven't seen any, but one time, uh, I well, it, it's, it's, it's still debatable whether the bear ate my orchard or a Bigfoot ate my orchard. I was pissed off. but uh, <laughs> Regardless of know, who ate it. <laughs> yeah. He didn't like figs, whoever it was. He really enjoyed all the other fruits. God the hates figs. figs, so it's I understand that. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, the goats I, also my orchard, my new trees, and they left the fig. Hmm. So I wonder what that means. Can you tell us <laughs> all the animals that you have? Because you have so many animals, and they all love you so much, and they're so cute, and they're always having babies. Yeah. <laughs> so I li- I'm a vegetarian myself. Um, that's not something I really talk about a lot. Uh, people do ask me about it more often now, just cause some people found out and they're like, what? Cause everybody just assumes, cause I'm a pretty rough tumble, you know, and aggressive and I, I have muscle muscles and I, you know, um, they assume you're just eating man. raw steak and everything. Yeah. Yeah. But I heard chickens be, yeah. too. So I, yeah, I immediately kind of put those together. Um, Absolutely. I, yeah. And I don't eat the chickens either. Um, 
but I do eat the eggs and I have milk cows and milk goats. So I live in a symbiosis, uh, with my animals, nice. my animals provide for me and I provide for them. And that's also part of with being an Odinist. When you read the Havamal, it, it has the Havamal is the closest thing a heathen has to like a, a Bible, I guess. And it's basically the words of the high one and uh, is what it translates into. And it's all about self-sufficiency and having your own farm and being able to live. And a lot of people really go heavily on the meat without stopping to think that when you hunt heavily, the only societies that were heavy hunters were very nomadic. And so because you can't hunt in a specific area, you'll hunt it out of existence real quick. And now you have no food to eat. What do you do? Where as opposed to like a cow, it takes 20, it takes, this is part of why I have the acreage I do. It takes about 20 acres to feed a cow without uh hay now that's to raise it up to the size where you can eat one cow where that 20 acres now my friend lucas king he has a little two acre thing where he grows all kinds of food sells it to restaurants uh sells veggie boxes to other people uh can't even keep enough food he's calling me like what would i do with like a hundred pounds of extra garlic you know and, and things like that and that's off this tiny little property off of food. And if you do that seasonally and go back to doing things like canning, um, making mead, one of the misconceptions about heathens being drunks was that they were always drinking mead, and especially in the winter. Well, we didn't have refrigerators and freezers. So if you just take your food and you put it in a, in a honey ferment, then that makes it so you can just stick it on the counter and that'll sit there forever. It will never go bad. It'll start tasting a little funky after like 10 years or 15 years or something. But for the first like four or five years, it tastes better consecutively every year. So now that's free storage without electricity. Of course, in the winter, they're drinking and it was a very mild alcohol with the mead. Actually, one of the things where uh, uh, when uh, Rome started winning some of the wars against them is... Uh, they brought in Roman wine and the heathen people didn't do well with Roman wine. And explain the definition of heathen. Cause I think people might think of it weirdly since, uh, I don't know. Uh, what's his name? Uh, I can't remember his name now. Who's the pastor who called me a uh, antichrist and a, and called Missa a foul mouth heathen. Uh, come on. What's the guy's name? Anyway, the, I didn't the, even know that happened. Is he is he a famous evangelist? He's he evangelist? was at the Flatters Conference. He spoke at the Flatters Conference, and um, come on, Dave, you know another guy that st- spoke at the Flatters Conference, the Christian the guy that the guy that caused the uproar that one time where the lady stood up and and yelled at him because he was saying Dean, you, Dean Nodal. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I don't know why I couldn't remember his name. <laughs> Uh, Dean Odom called my wife a foul mouthed heathen. So just explain what the word heathen means. That would have been like, fuck yeah, bro. Thanks, <laughs> yeah, we listening. celebrate. We didn't care too much. Yeah. Uh, uh, you, the, the, they mostly followed Odin. We pretty much, and this is one of the things Tacitus remarked on in uh, Germania, the Germanic people, the, the Scandinavian people, we all basically lived out in the forests. And, and we didn't live in societies around each other. Um, it was a society of free men that would meet once a week in what we would call a bloat. And there you would get together and you would trade goods. Um, this is also a, a bone of contention for me because they always try to claim these giant sacrifices. Although in none of my literature can I find anything that says how I should perform a sacrifice. Unlike like... Uh, uh, um, like Jewish uh, uh, with their um, law books where they very specifically describe how to do a sacrifice and what animals and stuff. That doesn't even exist. There's Jews above you. Stuff. There's Jews right above you. Shh. Be careful. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> hey. hey. Um, <laughs> oh, wait. I on the screen, they're two. not above you. They're over there. <laughs> can I uh, Can I ask, um, you can can ask, I ask Benjamin a baby Twitter question? Just a quick preliminary. You may. Granted. Benjamin, do you think Jaren's son was raptured yesterday? Because 
There is some concern out there that he was raptured yesterday. No, Rose and I read. We, we we looked at his channel again. Should I bring it up and show you? Oh, he changed it. Uh, see, see, go ahead and talk. About it. Wait, <laughs> is prove to me your son's still there? He is. He's sleeping, but I'll prove it when okay. he wakes up. Right. There, there, <laughs> All right, never mind, Benjamin. The information has come to light, man. Anyways, but Dave, you don't know what you're talking about yet. Yeah, the forest by ourselves. We uh, we didn't all follow the same God. Actually, a lot of uh, like uh, lower uh, class people, your workers, were more followers of of Tor. Um, a lot of people would follow Tear. The on a lot of your warriors wow. would follow Tear. So depending on, so we didn't all follow a one God and we lived out in the forest and didn't really have a, a, what they would recognize Rome would recognize as a society. So we're godless heathens, definitely foul mouth. Totally. Good. So it was a good description then, but kind of redundant, but, uh, so yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah Dave, really was. this guy returned to the King. He did have a video the other day, rapture flight, seven, 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 departing gate, one, five, three, sea of Galilee, five, 18, six, 15, 22. So we were all ready. <laughs> That was going to be 7.18 p.m. here. Miss and I were in the car. We held on to Maverick very tight. He did not leave our hands. But then I said, oh, I guess the the um, the tribulation is over. Or it's not going to happen, the rapture. Then if you go look at his channel now, though, he's got this video where you learn that actually 6.15, 2022 was only the opening of the window. The window. We have until the Feast of Trumpets on 9.28.22. So we still got three more months for Maverick to leave us. Yeah. At so any is that moment, like when you get? Is that like when you're down. smoking and you drive and you kind of just crack the window so some of the smoke like whips out, but <laughs> yeah. there's still like something just right crack the window. Nice. Nobody's nobody's rolled down the window all the way yet to completely eliminate the uh, Christians. So we're still here. That's a great analogy considering we do live in a weed grinder on this dialectic. I plane see where Balderson's going with open <laughs> to, to pull the smoke out. Yeah, so the uh, I like to I like to keep, keep it <laughs> even. You know, all you know. I like to be consistent. What and happened? If Somebody we're gonna die, where did Rose go? Rose left. <laughs> Just like screwed that. Everything up. Yeah. Thanks, Rose. Uh, I wonder if I can fix it by. You want me to log in with another another <laughs> another account? I was going to join him from my phone. I was, I could do that either way. I'll do it. Um, now I lost my train of thought. Where was I saying? Oh yeah. So this is the. Uh, here's the thing. Because I was telling a couple people. Have you heard about the uh, the rapture supposed to happen they're like no 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 nobody knows the day or hour nobody knows the day or time so i'm like okay well there are uh seven billion people let's say that we're dave weiss and we want to believe there's only four billion people so think if we all pick a day and hour from now going forward we'll cover quite we'll we'll make sure there's no end of the world for at least how many i can figure that out real quick <laughs> be a long time though because if nobody knows the day or hour well then we can just have everybody predict it and then somebody knows the day or hour because everybody's predicting it so there's 24 hours in a day. Fly up into the sky. Yes. Wouldn't one person having been raptured been awful noticeable for the rest of us? Like, wow. I don't think we're supposed to notice Dude. they're gone. Well, one man will be in the field, and one man will, and two men will be in the field, oh, and one man will be left. Oh, out of existence. Yes. <laughs> so there's only eight oh. eight thousand seven hundred and sixty Thanos style. That can't be right. So like, so like Thanos was rapturing. <laughs> yes. Dave, how many hours in a year? Um, I, I know that because I think it's 8,760 or something like that. Beautiful. I, it seems like it'd be so much more. Only 8,000 hours in a year. All right. So if we, mold, and then we've got uh, eight, let's just say there's 7 billion of us. And then you divide by that 8,760, uh, 8 billion divided by 8,760. That'll give us how long we can push this out uh, divided by 8,760. So if we all pick a day and an hour going forward, then for 913,000 years, their world can't end because uh, somebody knows the day or, or hour then. Does that make sense? Am I making sense here? Mm. You're not following, Crumb? Uh, it's just a lot it's of numbers. Like we a lottery ticket and picking every single number, you can't lose. Correct. Uh, got it. Right. That's so if funny. nobody knows the day or hour, that's what the Bible says. And that's why people say we can't predict what the day or hour of the end of the world will be. Then have everybody on earth get assigned to pick a day between now and whenever, 913,000 years, and every hour of those 913,000 years. And this way we make sure that the world doesn't end for 913,000 years. But don't you think that this whole doomsday thing is like, it's going to be, oh, this day, everything's going to shit. I, I think it's, I think we're expecting something to happen so drastically in one minute. No. In reality, it, if you look at it like through a year, you know, like if a bunch of people die tomorrow, but not everybody, they're, 
the end of their life ended. And so, right. But it, it'll probably be a lot slower than... I think it'll than, always be the end times. I think they probably were saying that in the year 1500, in the year 1900. Benjamin, I do have that question because I know you've read a lot of Greek mythology and things like that. Do you believe in the timeline? I mean, are you a believer in the books that say they were written when they were written in say 2000 BC, 1000 BC, are you a believer in those dates? No, no. In any kind of history accuracy whatsoever. Absolutely not. One of the things that I do the most is I bring things to a reality because if I can't make it work in my lab, then whatever I'm reading is probably bullshit. And there's bullshit everywhere and inside every culture inside it. It's all been twisted, all been turned. Um, we can verifiably know that supposedly uh, there's so, you know, most of the planets Abrahamic. Abrahamics think that we've only been around for 6,000 years, but there's all kind. Then you go to scientists and it jumps anywhere from 150,000, you know, whatever. It, it, it's all over the damn place. You can't, I don't trust any of it. Mm. And on top of that, what, our time systems have been changed so much um, as a heathen. So Northern Europe, there was only two times of the year at that point, at one point, that's the way the heathen people before meeting the Christians um, and the Roman Catholics, that's how they kept time was just two, two cycles a year. It was either winter or summer. You either closed up at home and stayed at home for winter, or you went out and worked for summer one or the other. Um, and so any understanding of time has been changed, rewritten, uh, redone. Uh, if you, Lucas is working on an entire different, uh, uh, star map that, uh, puts things in a multiple cycle that are balanced against each other. Um, and it extends things out where the cycle wouldn't even make sense what they're doing at all. Mm -hmm. uh, so we don't even know where anything sits. Julian calendar, Gregorian calendar. Oh, did they you did they have five uh, rest days? Um, oh, did they did they do eight months and then did five months uh, because it was a lunar or was it a solely lunar? And it's all how do you get a handle on any of it? They don't have a handle on any of it. No, it's a, a disaster. I, I, I don't, it's hard to place when this all happened or, so I guess my question is the, the Greek myths, when were they said to have been written? I'm not familiar with when they're said to have been written. Yeah, me neither. I, I think that they are mostly BC. Yeah. But uh, yeah. I, I don't, yeah. yeah. And so do, when you read those, do you think that they're more likely to be more recent? Or do you still place, place them as pretty ancient compared to today i think i think uh, none of our history is ex as extended out as what it's made out to be i don't think our right. the history of man is that long ago um it, it, it's <clears throat> very interesting because how does how does it make any sense at all that we went from civilizations that were built doing things like uh building the pyramids uh megaliths literally Right, everywhere, everywhere in the world. Some, and, somehow and now, connected. Somehow these people knew you, each other. I heard somebody say, I think it was just yesterday, that um, when historians talk about, you know, 60,000 years ago, this happened and this happened, people don't know what happened 20 years ago in New York City. Right. Okay? Yeah. They, 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 you know, it, it's like our history is complete and total nonsense. All of it. And Dave, did you hear how they come right. up with ice core samples? You know, I've always heard this, that they can figure out what the atmosphere was like due to ice core samples and things. But I never knew, like, how do they know the dates of these ice core samples? Well, the, the way that they do it is they just measure how much snowfall there is a year. And they're like, okay, it's 14 millimeters per year. And then they just multiply down. Like as if every year was yes. the identical amount of snow. Yes. <laughs> well, there's an average mean amount. Oh, of know, course. They, yes. they make arguments. Yeah, it's brilliant. Oh, well, that eventually it would weigh out over enough time that eventually. Right. Yeah. And there's no way that, uh, I don't know, 20,000 years ago that there was an extra bunch of snow or that there was, I mean, it's just stupid that they would just do that and multiply and just say, oh, yeah, this is it. We can figure out how long these go back. Uh, oh, boy. Yeah. One of yeah. the big, and I actually had started talking about this a, a, a few minutes ago, but one of the bones of contention that I have is, like I said, 
heathens would do this float where everybody would come out of their hovels in the forest and go out and meet together in this what's called a longhouse. And there you would do trading and you would have feasts. And, and if there was any kind of a problem, you would try and resolve it, things like that. Well, they who and when you're doing that, well, this week I bring the goat and the goat gets slaughtered. And, and we all split up the goat and take our piece and go home because meat's not going to last very long. We don't have refrigeration. So what are we going to do with the bones of these slaughtered animals? We're going to go ahead and throw that in the bone pit because we're not disgusting and we're not going to spread it all over the place. Well, now every archaeologist that finds one of these is like, this was a sacrifice pit and they were killing people. <laughs> right. Maybe it's just where they put the dead. Right. So they weren't all spread everywhere, you jackasses. Yeah, you're just making an assumption and whatever fits your narrative. Whatever yeah. you want to tell. Yep. Yep. Or they sacrifice people. Hey, well. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe the Clinton line goes way back, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Dave, that, that kill list is at zero as far as I'm concerned. Okay. The Clinton kill Definitely. list is zero. YouTube, zero. Yes. Yeah, we're on, yes. we're on YouTube, zero. That might change later. It might be negative. Right it might be negative four. She's probably saved four people's lives. <laughs> if you really at think least. About it. Yeah. At least. At least. At least. Maybe I mean, 4,000. She is the first woman to ever run for president. I mean, outside of Cynthia McKinney, who's a black woman, and like lots of other women throughout history, <laughs> back in the 1800s. Right. So she, brave. She was so brave. Yeah. <laughs> but she was the first of the uh, of the modern day, and so strong. You know, she was so strong to stay with her husband after what he did to her. Uh, just very strong. Yes. Yeah. She's a good woman. Yes. I hope she runs again so that uh, she can have body doubles and pass out at every. Uh, Obviously, it was not a great housewife because that stain was still around. But you know, <laughs> she never heard of what? tied tied bleach stick or anything like that. So, so th we have to assume that the entire <clears throat> Monica Lewinsky story is just a made up story. Correct. Do you I think heard she's that an that actress, like like playing somebody that was the real, like somebody else. Yeah, did the real that. lady's name is Mary Mahoney. Yeah, that's right. Are we calling <laughs> porn stars actresses now? <laughs> Well, because if you remember, Kenneth Starr came out and said he had a double M who reported to him all these things. Saying, well, then when she came out, she was Monica Lewinsky. Well, where's the double M? The double M was Mary Mahoney, who was, if you don't know that story, killed uh, shortly after that in a Starbucks. Uh, you, you know, Monica Lewinsky is like 55 right now. I just remember it was like yesterday that she was on her knees crawling around the White House. <laughs> That's a good joke. Thing. It's on her hands and knees. I like it. I like it. Do I, where's your drum roll? <laughs> Oh, um, <laughs> so wait, getting back to my thing, do you think that entire story was put out so later, years later, when people are saying there's big conspiracies, and people go, they can't even keep a blowjob a secret. How many fucking people say that? Everybody. It's uh, like they've right. been fed to them or something. Government I mean, can't do shit. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I contend that that might be a, a pre-plan so, story. So you contend that the government's doing the old Hamlet. Pretending like they're the idiots so that way they can be the brilliant ones. Yeah. So let me tell you the story, though. Mar Mary Mahoney, former. Oh, this is from Wiki Spooks. I never even heard of that website. Uh, but I'll read this here. Here's Mary Mahoney. Come on, come on up. She is a former White House intern who was murdered in 1997 at a Starbucks coffee shop in Georgetown. The murder happened just after Mike Iskoff of Newsweek dropped a hint before the Monica Lewinsky scandal broke. The former White House staffer was about to talk about her affair with Clinton. So this girl, Mary Mahoney, supposedly, is the one who had the affair with Clinton, is the one who told Kenneth Starr, whoever the uh, attorney was. And then it says, Mahoney interned for, whoever that is, the White House official responsible liaison, blah, 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 blah. Anyway, uh, I want to read how she died, the murder. July 7, 1997, the bodies of 25-year-old Mahoney and two others uh, were all found in the cold storage room by the morning crew at the Starbucks coffee shop where Mahoney worked as a night manager. All had been shot to death. The execution style occurred amid the pretrial media coverage of the Paula Jones lawsuit against Clinton, and only three days after Mike Iskoff of Newsweek announced that a former White House staffer was coming out with her story of being sexually harassed while working for Bill Clinton. The three worked at Starbucks, located at a relatively low-crime area of Burleith, north of Georgetown, a community generally immune to such violence. George Stepanopoulos, Monica Lewinsky, and Chelsea Clinton were all regulars at the Starbucks. When this event occurred, only the White House was aware it had an intern problem. The motive in the Starbucks massacre was supposedly robbery, though none of the $10,000 of cash on hand was taken after, even after Mahoney and her two co-workers were executed. 
The store's doors had been locked from the outside, as if the night crew had locked them before leaving the night before. They did this every night. Apparently, the assailants, assailants locked up behind them after committing the murders. By the way, the other people were shot once each. Mary Mahoney shot eight times in the head. Um, so what do you have a coincidence? <laughs> it's all a coincidence. It's probably suicide. <laughs> probably suicide. I think that she shot the other two first to murder suicide. Uh, and this is the convicted perpetrator. And I forgot what his deal was, too. Like, uh, he even claims now that he was coerced into um, confession. Here, here it is right here. So the Washington Post reported during his trial that Cooper told FBI agents, I swear on my father's grave and my son's life that I didn't do Starbucks. So uh, who did it? Well, who knows? But and then you have Monica Lewinsky come out in this whole trial. But then there's this like, you know how, much, how rich she's gotten from this? She's a multi, multi, multi millionaire who sold like five books that have been on the top 10. Uh, clearly. Yeah, uh, she people came out like perfectly handling all the the press, all all of that. It was like, yeah, like, nobody would get caught for that and then just turn it into lemonade. Did she started selling a line of blunts yet? <laughs> probably, <laughs> probably with the cigar was <laughs> that's great. Her and Snoop Dogg are like, yeah, they're called the Oval Oval Office. Blunts. Oh my god, that is such you don't want to know what that blunt was sealed up with. You don't want to know. Don't want to know. <laughs> what is this glue? I think that would be a huge seller. <laughs> it would a be a huge idea. seller. It's a good idea. It's a good idea. No, I think I, I think about that, and uh, I think that uh, it's a good idea. Yeah, uh, it's a really good idea. Yeah, I, I, yeah. And usually during robberies, from all the robberies I've looked into, the money is taken. That's just something that usually goes along with robbery. You don't just go in and kill three Starbucks employees like, haha, we robbed the place and then just leave and lock the did door. They take this, did they take the bag, the, the beans? I think I, I mean, believe they left them there Starbucks too as well. Beans, I've heard that those are just the best in the world that all the yuppie fucks drink that that's tea. why they're nine dollars a cup okay now it makes sense i thought that it was yeah, just a... yeah so like i mean that, that was probably worth more than the money wow oh boy so yeah that's the uh mary mahoney story i never hear anybody talk about that one but it's pretty clear uh white house staffer again the double m i got it i don't know why it just doesn't mention the double m so i'll have to look into where because that was like reported or some in news some newspaper they said oh we've got a double m intern that's already spoke up, said that she's been harassed by Bill Clinton, and then they turned it into this. Uh, so maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe uh, Clinton stayed with, Hillary stayed with him because she knows that he's a loving, caring man who would never uh, sway on her. That could be it. Uh, Did we ever find out what happened to Rose? She said she, she had a hard a heart attack at, at 1.30. Hard stop. Well, hard stop. She said, she said uh, yeah, they had, they had something they had to go to. Uh... I didn't know it was okay. that hard of a stop that she would just be like, I didn't expect it either. Peace out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> or not even say peace out, just leave. But anyway, that's okay. It is, it is tough to kind of leave sometimes though. So I, I kind of understand. This is a hard but... show to leave. Very difficult. Yeah. Dude, I agree. You want it, she wanted me to mention all my animals. Oh yeah, please. Farm here. So my farm's kind of ridiculous. She put a little thing in the chat. Uh, I got uh, four cows. Uh, two of them are getting ready to give birth. We're, Brian and I, after the show here, are going to go put up a uh, stanchion. So that way uh, wow. we got that. If you need help with that, I, I've watched Dr. Pohl a few times. So Excellent. Excellent. Um, I, I'll keep that in mind. Yeah, uh, you, re- you, just, <laughs> you just put on a glove, basically, and reach in there and yank it out yeah. by the feet. So yeah, I can do it. Except, except for it's cows, so it takes a lot more yank. And actually, the last time I did that, they were heifers. It was so it was their first calf. But it took me, another guy, and a vet all with chains wrapped around the calf to yank that thing out. It was horrible. Oh, is that that tool he uses? Um, he sometimes uses a tool that, like, grabs the back yeah. end of them and then you crank it and pull them out that way? Yeah, you, you grab, it wraps around their legs, and then it pulls them out because they kind of come out, hopefully, Superman style. You don't, oh, right. hopefully, not coming out. What is the, what is the per- percentage of cows that give can give birth completely on their own? Uh, after the heifer, the heifer, it's only like a 50, 50 after heifer, it's most of them, but, uh, uh, I've got many cows. So they're a little bit different too. Um, and I'm just being a worry ward about it. Cause I really like my milk cows. Right. So I had some milk cows and I got, uh, I don't know, like what, eight goats. <laughs> when you don't know how many animals you have of certain type of animals, you know, you might have too many. You have yeah. 50 chickens. No, I, 
uh, at least. And then I got turkeys and I got peacocks and uh, Llamas? I had guineas, but the bobcats got the guineas. Uh, and then I got like uh, 10 alpacas now, I think. Um, now, the, the next question, are alpacas just for fertilizer and wool? <laughs> yeah, yeah, nobody really eats them. Actually, the animal underneath all that hair, there's only like a big alpaca is about 170 pounds is all. And your average alpaca is like 140, 150 pounds. Uh, and that's a male even. Uh, so there isn't even much animal under there. It's a lot of hair. And the hair is like basically cashmere. And it's it's super silky, super soft. It doesn't have lanolin in it, which is what makes wool it, wool itch. It's an oil inside there. Um, and uh, alpaca hair does not have that. And then the manure is direct soap. So most manure you need to age because otherwise the manure will burn your plant with nitrogen burn. It needs to be broken down and made available. Alpacas don't have teeth. They, the, they have a couple little bottom teeth. They don't have chewing teeth like you would think. Uh, and their lips are split like a cleft lip. And uh, they can move each side of their lip and they go up to leaves and they like just kind of gently pull the leaves off. Whereas like a goat, a goat goes up and, rawr, and just rips shit out of the ground, eats the root, the, the plant, the stalk, everything. Alpacas only eat like the leaves of things. So their manure is this just super fantastic manure you can literally just put right on top of the garden and it's almost time release. It just kind of fertilizes it and keeps on going. It's just great. Wow. Who knew? So what else? You got, you got more than yeah. that. Do we want to go to the Rockfin side and start asking them the, the and big I got a pig, questions? And I got yeah. a, pig now. A, pig, a pig came wandering down the road and moved in. That, that's a different story than I have. What if I told that story? <laughs> pig came down my street yeah. here the other day and just I just let it in. Go ahead. Live here, pig. Yeah, it was <laughs> it was hilarious because all my alpacas and goats started screaming so we go running outside with guns like oh it must be a bear or a mountain lion uh because we get mountain lions here and bears and a lot of bobcats uh and so we go running outside and this fucking pig is wandering down the driveway big old smile on its face tail wagging like a dog and the pig just lives here now i like it i don't want to say it I like it. What's yeah, his name? That's how my cat showed up. It just was, I guess, Petunia. It's my cat now. So. Petunia. Yeah. All right. We're nice. going to go over to Rockfin, okay. but we are going to, uh, Dave, you want to advertise the app real quick? Uh, no, that's all right. Wow. Really? What the hell is wrong with you? Uh, <laughs> somebody wanted me to mention that there is a Telegram group, uh, t.me slash flat Michigan. And it's for people in Michigan that are flat earthers. Uh, it's a pretty good idea. If you want to start a telegram group for your specific state, uh, start oh, yeah. one, start in, 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 in inviting people there. And then you can have like a California telegram group where if there is ever any events or things, you can mention it in there uh, as well as the app. Don't get me wrong. The, the app is equally important, but all my links are at flat Anybody that wants to book me, there find the app support for the app contact button there, short videos, long videos, free videos, podcasts. It's all there. Flat earth, Beautiful. And then can you please tell them where they can find you, Benjamin? But I do know that I put both your links in the description. So uh, that's find him your at Flattoberfest. Rockfin, your YouTube. Yes. And yes, Flattoberfest. Um, find me at Flattoberfest. We will hang out. It is going to be absolutely amazing. I have uh, Benjamin Balderson on YouTube. And then uh, Rockfin, it's Benjamin Balderson's Odin Al Odin's Alchemy. I'm on all the podcast apps. I think Odyssey. And if you want to look at some of the things that I make, like uh, we do a comfort cream, uh, Dave really enjoyed that. And uh, we've gotten all kinds of crazy results from that. Um, and Rose also, uh, the, some of the jewelry I make, uh, I make a gut bomb. We make a lot of different things uh, just off the His farm. His bombs know. are off the hook. And then what's that stuff, uh, the, the stuff that you take in the winter, the, the brew? What, was, what is it? The gut bomb. The, the gut, gut bomb. bomb. Like yeah. if you are, if you think you're getting sick, you take a shot of this stuff. Goodbye, yeah. sickness. It is gone, gone through the really? mouth. No, yeah. no chance the sickness can survive this thing. This way or the other yeah, way? It kicks. No, you drink it. It kicks you all drink. your. And then what happens? It, and, and then it, it just, it just. Oh, I thought it. I thought it makes you. 
throw up or something. No, 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 no. It wipes out oh. any infection, any anything. It's and it like give. I mean, it's giving you nutrients and it's wiping out everything. It's just a, it's an amazing. What is, is it? An elixir? What do you call it? Yeah, it'd be it'd be a tincture, a tincture. A tincture. And, a tincture. And, yeah, yeah. I still have it. It doesn't go bad, right? I have it in the refrigerator. It's still good, no, right? No, you can you can keep it. It's fermented. It's double fermented, actually. You can keep Dude. it out. You don't even need it in the fridge. You betcha. For yeah, people people mention that when I take a first shot, they're like, "Whoo!" Like, yeah, it's got some bite to it, you know. And it's got uh, it's not a lot horrible. Of it's it's not. It's like vinegary, spicy, fermented. Yeah. Fermented. If it tasted too good, it, it wouldn't work. It has to taste a little Steve bad. Mercer you know what? I like the way it tastes. I like the way it tastes. Steve nice. Mercer from Freeman Flies, uh, Freeman Flies manager and Robert Phoenix's manager, he calls it vinaigrette, and he uses it on salads and just eats it. Wow. Wow. <laughs> That's crazy. Let me ask vinaigrette. you uh, something that I think all alchemists are asked. What is the Philosopher's Stone? In your uh, opinion. Ofta, that's a long answer. Um well, so the easy, the easier answer is, is like if you're making the stone of any plant and then the philosopher's stone, you just have to carry the idea above. But when you perform alchemy on a plant, you, you take your plant and you split it into uh, the oil side and the salt side. And you bring both those two things to their epitome. And then you put them back together after you've burnt out everything in the middle, which is typically called the ego. and then through the oil, the oil's bearing this sulfur element and the sulfur passes through the oil and enlivens the salt and frees the trapped souls in the salt and then coagulates together into this, what's called the stone, because then when it's cool, it will be a stone. But then as soon as you put heat to it, it'll vaporize like a liquid because now it's got both sides, masculine and feminine characteristics. Before this, Salt, when you put fire to it, would just get hot and stay stone. Va uh, oil, when you put heat to it, would vaporize and it would be liquidy when it's when it's not uh, under heat. Now it's masculine at when it's at its rest, and it with heat it'll go into its feminine. So now you take that up to uh, the uh, metal level, and the you make the same kind of thing. And there's a few different uh, uh, stories about what it possibly is. Um, I have some uh, I have some uh, theories on it at this point. I think it's probably uh, uh, alchemical. Uh, you first have to make a red mercury, and then you take and do the uh, alchemical process on or 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 calum or chalum, and also with uh, lithium. And you do an or or alchemical process where you'd merge those into the stone, and what it's supposed to do, and most people wouldn't even want to take it. Uh, you don't. Most people don't have the mental capacity to take it because it's basically makes you uh, into the. It's a sneak peek of if you had achieved uh, godhood. So that's from the left hand path point of view. Uh, from the right hand path they follow a God from the left-hand path. You become a God. You put yourself through the great work, not God, the all father, not God, the original, you didn't make everything, right. but you've taken this path and become something more than human because humans, you've burnt out that Eagles part. So this gives you a sneak peek of the powers you would achieve having done that completely. And in those sneak peeks, basically anything you wish you are able to control reality and it's going to happen. And so all those stray stupid thoughts we all have, like you get cut off in traffic and you're like, wish that fucking cunt would die. <laughs> well, then they die. Right. Yeah, you know, and that that's your, ah, oh, holy, you know, they, you know, you don't really want that person to die. Most of, most people don't have the mental strength to understand the ability to change reality and alter reality in that kind of a meaningful way. So this life that we're living in this dirty uh, uh, body, as opposed to going through the great work is part of the training that we need to have to have that kind of uh, a power bestowed on us. Have you ever seen Red Mercury? I have not seen it personally, but I'm I'm going to attempt to make it here just shortly. 
So it, m the way mercury is typically made is it's sweated out of cinnabar. So you would take cinnabar crystal, which is red, and you would take and put that under heat and do a basic distillation out of the cinnabar, which is half the alchemical procedure. So you're taking and basically removing the oil. That's the oil of cinnabar. And then you would then need to take and continue heating up that crystal and breaking it down until the salt side is coagulated back together. And then you would need to take and put that salt back in with the mercury which would then give you a red mercury um from the way i understand it and just like with the spagyrics if i just take the essential oil out of a plant and i try doing an experiment with just the oil the oil will its effect is to open up pathways and those pathways are supposed to then be filled with the salt so without the salt, you don't get the punch. Uh, it's no different than in water. Uh, distilled water won't carry charge. It's only when you throw salt in there that now it, ha it has an electroconductivity and it's able to carry charge. So when you only put in half of it, you're not getting the full equation. And that's what they've done entirely with mercury. So I just need to gather up. I need to get enough cinnabar in order to sweat that out. And I haven't had... Uh, my uh, smithery put back together. Uh, it's been a busy couple of years <laughs> since I've Sounds met like Dave it. a couple of years ago. I don't think I've stopped moving. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, Dave always says, man, there is no, uh, we can, there's never enough time. You could give me 50 hours yeah. in a day. I would still be out of time all the time. I'd still be late for the show is what I'm saying. You know, I was listening to um, the latest Veritas radio with Mel and um, he had this doctor, I forget his name off the top of my head, but he was talking about, just how your genetics only make up for 20% maybe of your health and longevity. And it's all the way that you think and, and all the way, you know, that you, um, that you put yourself out there. And I, I had a great point. I forgot my point now. <laughs> what, what were you just saying? And what was the last point you just made? Benjamin? Um, oh, I, ah, I just, that me. He said he saw you uh, a while ago, and then we've been yeah, nobody. Nobody ago, sleeps. Just, I haven't stopped. We're yet. all busy. <laughs> oh, 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 yeah, yeah, that's it. Curiosity. When you lose your curiosity, that's when you get old and die. Absolutely. When you stop being yeah. curious, right? And uh, there's, I, I'm going to live forever. Yeah, I am so fucking curious. <laughs> there's no way, Dave. Yeah. What did you think about the? Uh, <laughs> did you enjoy Professor Dave getting lit up by Matt? Walsh and then all the comments on those videos. Matt, Matt, Matt did a great job. Matt needs to have a flat Earth conversation. That would he, be nice. Give him a little, he's doing fine. Just give him a little. We'll wait a little bit on that one. I yeah, like yeah, what yeah. he's doing. I, I, like I have doing. no complaints about Matt. Matt does a, a freaking great job. So yeah, I yeah. actually included that on the debunking the debunkers. The first one is I'm not Professor Dave. Right. The second one, is I like the, of, all the comments from is. people saying like uh, I, I saw people say this. They said I was with you on the flat Earth thing. Now I've seen how you've handled this and I have to go back and revisit flat earth. So yeah. that's the kind Dude, of I've got me. so many people that like, I saw your flat earth thing. I'm not a flat earther, but what the hell's up with this guy? And, and, uh, I send them the playlist to come back. They're like, Holy I crap. Wa this I real. watched some of that. It was, it was hard to watch that. dude that could not have been more smug. He yeah. really couldn't have been more smug. The, and every the, time the, you listen to him now, I hate him more and more and more and more. It's just yeah. like, Oh, so great. The show, um, uh, what's the name of the show that I was on? Um, they just they just reached out to me yesterday to invite me back on again. They want to talk about the moon landing. And I'm just like, I'm like, you guys are so like you had. I did a show with them on flat Earth, blew their minds, and then they then they literally go and do a space show next. Yeah. You know, it's just like it's like, did you guys not comprehend <laughs> anything that we talked about? You know, I'm okay with people being ignorant because they never were shown. But then after I clearly show them there's a fucking problem and they go right back off into space and and planets and everything else i don't have time for that low level you thinking know, you, don't, you don't honestly feel like most of the truth communities like that that most of the truth community it's just whatever they resonate with or whatever it cool is. story no there's a lot of there's a there's so many people turning over that that when they see flat earth they literally convert <clears> and they change their whole lives there's so many i mean look at owen benjamin look at Look at, um, there's so many people that do this. Look at these TikTokers that are going wild now. Check check out those TikTok channels. Um, 
And flat earth is profoundly. I wasn't really you. meaning flat earth, but I'm talking about like the truth community in general, the ones that go down all the crazy talk about every conspiracy rabbit well, hole. It's kind of like it becomes an addiction more well, than it, like it, a pursuit. It, it, yeah. But what, you know what? When you find truth, when you find like, you know, when you find a deception, that's finding truth. You find truth below that deception. Right. So when you find truth, it's ex- your body, your your soul is like, yeah, you're, you're you're on the track, you're on the path. We're here to find truth, okay? We're here to to explore this world and find truth. So when you find, you know, these these conspiracies, there no, you, when you define when you find these deceptions, um, it's charging. It makes you want more. It makes you go deeper. And so when you find one, then you find two and three and five. Now you're into ten and twenty and fifty, and you go deeper and deeper. So. It spirals, but it's spiraling into truth as long as you handle it right. Yeah. And then, and the other thing is, there's a lot of friggin' negativity. There's a lot of doomsday. You can look at this world right now and logically can do, can conclude that we don't have a lot of time left, or you can swing it the other way and see that people are waking up and change your 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 energy. Stop creating yeah. this world that they want. If everyone focused on all of the doom that they're putting out there, that doom is going to happen. Okay, but if people see it, expose it for what it is, and then enjoy yourselves and and do good things, then we can turn this whole thing around. That's why the brainwashed sheep. Big- yeah, no, like that's why the brainwashed sheep is kind of integral and kind of a good thing is because they're so brainwashed that they can never believe that something like that nefarious could even exist, and because of that ignorance, because of like they're just complete unwillingness to see what the, what it is and still live in that fairy tale that the government loves them that all this stuff like for some reason i do think there's something positive that they they believe that more than we ever could because and so for, in a weird way we are manifesting the shitty world just by recognizing it and in a weird way their ignorance hmm. kind of in a weird way kind of keeps it alive because you know like if, if you told somebody that it, like there are some people where if you know you get conditioned to accept the world's going to end so by the time it does we're like yeah you see i told you but if you just for somebody who never even thought of that until the very last day when it does probably live they're better. not they're not they're going to fight it they're going to be like no hell no th- no this is not a lot like so in a weird way we kind of accept it just by looking into shit too in, in my opinion i don't know well I and, think, and you get energy like and, and, right. exactly. and when you try and fight it that's the big thing i think when people want to put their energy into changing the system and fighting the system, I don't want anything to do with the system. I moved off. I got off grid. Fuck the system. I hope the whole thing crashes or I hope it succeeds. Whatever. Just leave me alone. It's like George Carlin. Yeah. George Carlin had that. I'm going to have to get there as well. It's it's when you, and when you, when you expose these things for the frauds that they are, you take the energy out of it. You stop giving your energy like Mm -hmm. heliocentrist, every cell in their body is afraid of an asteroid hitting us and running out of oil and all right. of the stuff that comes with heliocentrism, right? Whether they're thinking about it consciously or not, every cell in their body is reacting to it. When you expose it, you're like, oh, that's how the fucking trick is done. And then you relax. So everybody, if you, you, everybody just relax. Right. You, you can relax. You can be an it's RV. Okay. You can be an RV tart and wear orange. That's okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's yeah. okay. You can look at the numbers. Like you don't need to be afraid of these numbers. I don't know why people have this fear of numbers, take the 33 away from them. Take all these numbers and uh, shit on them and make them so that they have no power. Don't give them more power by being afraid. Oh, you can't put that 33 there. Hey, you, no, you know what? Numbers have meaning. Use sure, it. Sure, they can be used. Oh, I thought you were saying. Yeah. 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 Use it. I mean, there are signs and symbols and, and stuff. They have power. Use it for good. Here's the problem. The reason that, that so many people can't see is because they're good people. Good people Absolutely, yeah, can't that's fathom the amount of evil there is in this world. Yeah, they right. can't fathom that people would do such horrendous things. The reason that the thing that the Clintons do for lunch, if you know what I mean, um, that <laughs> we'll talk about that. Yes. Yeah. People can't fathom it. All right. Yeah. yeah. Let's, let's go to that. It's even truth. Let's go right. to Rockfin. Uh, my two sponsors, we've got Truth Max. Uh, so get your bags of Truth Max at truthmax.com and JJ's CBD rub. It's JJS CBD rub.com. Also, oh, look at that little kitty. And uh, yeah, check them out. Fest. Don't forget about Flattoberfest. It's Flat in the chat. EarthFestivals.com. Karen, Karen, put the link in the chat for Flattoberfest. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, but uh, check those two people out and thank <laughs> them for sponsoring the show. And I believe that is it. So we will uh, take a pee break real quick 
and be back with the second half of the Baby Truther Show. I'll be back tomorrow for the Jaronism Show. We've got another crypto group class, which is now like a grieving class. It's everybody gets there and we all mourn and everybody cries and we hold each other. <laughs> no, I'm just oh, yeah, especially that, that sounds like fun. I might join. You might come um, What What time is the Jaronism Show tomorrow? Uh, let's go with one. One JST? No, one PST. Pacific PST. Time. Yeah, specific time. Uh, I'm going to wow. take the over. I'm going to uh, take the over. Okay, good. We, we should bet. Too. Let me Bye. see if there's any. Uh, okay, good. We're all ready. All right, let's head over there. And you will hear the outro music here at YouTube and then Rockfin. Stay there. We'll be right back. All right. This has been episode number nine for the YouTube side with Benjamin Balderson. We'll see you guys soon. Till then, peace.